It seems like not that long ago that handing in a freshly printed essay from your shiny new inkjet printer made you the coolest kid in class. At least, in your own mind, anyway. But nowadays, printers that could have cost you a pretty penny in the mid-1990s are handed out like candy with new PC purchases, and it's never been easier to afford something that will inexplicably stop working at 2 a.m. the night before your term paper is due. So how exactly do printers work, and what makes them, well, some of them, so unreliable? Now you probably already know that the two main types of printers for home and office use are inkjet and laser. Unless of course you've still got one of those old dot matrix printers from the 80s because you get a kick out of tearing off those little strips on the edge of the paper. And both of them have advantages and disadvantages which we actually briefly covered in this video. But let's have a look at them in a little bit more depth. First up, we've got laser printers, which use, you guessed it, a frickin' laser beam to create prints. Laser printers also contain a rotating cylinder coated with a photosensitive, electrically charged material and a series of mirrors. When you send a document to a laser printer, the laser light is reflected by the mirrors onto the cylinder, which neutralizes the electrical charge in specific areas. Thanks to the rotation of both the cylinder and the mirrors, as well as the laser turning on and off at precisely the correct moments, the areas hit by the laser correspond to the actual print, and when toner particles hit the cylinder, they only stick to the areas exposed to the laser light, because the toner itself has an electrical charge too. Cool, right? Then a sheet of paper is pressed against the cylinder and the toner is transferred through to the paper using heat, which fuses the toner to it, which is why pages fresh out of a laser printer are always so nice and cuddly warm. Due to the precision of the laser, these kinds of printers are great for producing crisp, clear text. The other major player, the inkjet printer, is very, very different. Like the name says, this sort of printer uses liquid ink instead of solid toner particles. In consumer models, ink inside of those expensive cartridges is heated with an electrical charge causing a small amount to vaporize and form a bubble on the nozzle. The bubble then collapses and the pressure difference pulls a droplet of ink out of the cartridge and onto the paper. Because their internal workings are simpler than laser printers, they tend to be significantly cheaper. And although they can't print as quickly, they give much better print quality for photos, making them the go-to choice if you like to print your own snapshots at home. Unfortunately though, many inkjet owners have been disappointed by their printer's reliability. So then, why is it that they seem to give people such a hard time? Well, part of it is because printers have so many small moving parts that can break or wear out, not to mention the small nozzles that can clog easily, but perhaps a bigger part of the reason is the business model of inkjet manufacturers. The printers themselves are frequently sold at a loss, so ink refills can cost more than the actual printers themselves. Also, many cartridges contain smart chips that report that they're empty even if there is still leftover ink. But Fortunately, there are workarounds for this you can find online, and we're even starting to see alternatives appear on the market, such as Epson's new system that uses permanent, high-capacity ink tanks instead of pricey cartridges, which will hopefully usher in the day when we no longer need to sell vital organs just to afford some vacation photo printouts. Speaking of things with Small moving parts that need to be repaired, iFixit. iFixit.com is the world's free online repair manual. They've got step-by-step -step repair guides and Q&A with their massive community. I mean, we're talking they've got 15,000 plus repair guides for iPhones, iPads, Macs, Android devices, got other computers, etc. It's all wiki-based and therefore always up to date, you know, hopefully as long as the community's on the ball, which actually they do a pretty darn good job of. And iFixit.com is totally free with no ads or annoying paywalls. So how exactly does that work, Linus? Great question. iFixit also sells a wide variety of tools for repairing all that aforementioned stuff with lifetime warranties on the tools, by the way. They got everything like their ProTech toolkit, which we use 
all the time with all these little hard to find bits and all these little adapters, a little magnetic thing so you can like grab stuff out of hard to reach places. They've also got their mat that helps you keep all your screws organized. They got their whole bag that's got the tech tool kit, the mat and the ESD strap, some multimeter, all that kinds of stuff. So head over to ifixit.com slash techquickie and check out not only their guide so you can salvage some formerly not working electronics, but also their tools, which make the job a heck of a lot easier and more fun, if you're into that sort of thing. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit dislike. If you have suggestions for future Fast as Possibles, please do leave them below and we will try and check those out. I'll see you guys next time.